Currently, I, I am in a reading slump. Really in the past few weeks, every book that I pick up, whether I am enjoying reading it or not, it is just not holding my attention. I cannot get myself to finish a book right now. So I really just have like a stack of like half read books. And I don't know what it is, but I feel like this tends to happen every year around this time of year. And it's always when I have a bunch of books that I really, really want to read. Like I love October, I love fall. I just feel like I'm being sabotaged right now. So today, this week, I thought it'd be kind of fun to try to pull myself out of this slump. Like I said, I have a bunch of books that I've started and quite a few of them I really like, but I can't get myself to finish it. I don't know if that happens to anyone else. So I think maybe it would be best to start something new and try to see if it can capture my attention. I do think that if I am recording and like filming a reading vlog sort of video, that will kind of push me to read. So fingers crossed, I can find something that I actually can finish and get through the entire thing. I did just get my book of the month box in the mail and I worked with book of the month earlier this month. So I did get that book of the month box and then this is my personal book of the month so i did grab a different uh pick for this month and then a few add-ons so let's unbox that got a venti latte so i'm taking this very serious the garbage truck is outside so loud okay let's go p.s my sweater little cats it's so cute i thrifted this when i was in dallas if you saw the dallas vlog you already know. It's so cute and comfy. Okay. I did not realize that this was like a really thick book. This is going to be a hard no for me today because absolutely not. But this is Wellness by Nathan Hill. It sounded really interesting and a little bit different than what I normally read, which could be good for a reading slump, but this... It's too thick, I'm terrified. A new novel about modern marriage, the often baffling pursuit of health and happiness, and the stories that bind us together. This one could be a maybe. Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. This one could be good. It says his weapon isn't a gun or a knife, it's a secret her worst one. Another thriller, The Intern by Michelle Campbell. Young Harvard law student falls under the spell of a charismatic judge in this timely and thrilling novel about class, ambition, family, and murder. Another contender. Actually, okay, wait, I actually, <clears throat> okay. Both of these are extremely popular, highly recommended books, especially The Maidens by Alex Mitchell, I don't know how to say his name, but I read the, uh, his other book, the other popular book. What is it? The Silent Patient. And that was good. And then of course, The Maid. I think this one's sequel is coming out very soon. It says a dead body is one mess she can't clean up on her own. Shoot, okay, honestly, I think I'm in between these two. And I wasn't planning on choosing a new book because like I said, my TBR is crazy right now, but maybe, maybe this is what I need. Let's call in Hugo, my fiance, and see which one he chooses. I think he's in a meeting right now, so I'm just gonna take a pic. I just texted him, let's see what he chooses. <laughs> Hugo just asked if it was the same book. He was very confused over the maid versus the maiden. Two very different books, very similar titles, did not put that together. Anyway, he chose the maid. You know what book I'm gonna read today? We're gonna read this book. You think it'll be a good read? Yeah. <laughs> crazy head <laughs> So let's read the inside jacket. Or do we want to? I don't know. It says Molly Gray is not like everyone else. She struggles with social skills and misreads the intentions of others. Her gran used to interpret the world for her, codifying it in simple rules that Molly could live by. Her grandmother passes away. She has to navigate life and all of its complexities on her own. She throws herself into her work as a hotel maid. But Molly's orderly life is upended the day that she enters the suite of the infamous and wealthy Charles Black, only to find the room in disarray and Charles Black himself dead. The police end up targeting Molly because of her quirks and she finds herself caught in a web of deception. Will they be able to find out the real killer before it's too late? It sounds really good and I don't mean this 
in a derogatory way, but it sounds like a basic plot line. Like I feel like it will be a very easy read, you know? Hopefully a quick one. It's described as like a clue-like locked room mystery. I think we can do it, okay? So I'm, I'm going to get into this one. I've heard good things. I already caught myself putting the book down and picking my phone up instead and I'm only 27 pages in. Seriously, I have no attention span right now. It is insane, but 27 pages in, this book like hops right into the plot. The main character, Molly, she's really cute. Like she doesn't pick up on social cues. So a lot of like her replies or comments or just like her inner monologue is just really funny. Not much else to say because I have not gotten very far at all. So I'm gonna hop back into it. I did get a cake pop while I was at Starbucks. I'm going to eat that. I got the little cookies and cream cake pop. These are so good. I hardly ever get the cake pops because this little thing was like three dollars or something. They are delicious. I'm ready to get back into it. I'm motivated. a good time right <laughs> this book in this chapter molly's like talking about the few months before her grandma passed away and it is breaking my heart i can't even i can't even imagine <laughs> i didn't expect this book to make me cry <laughs> Morning, you guys i had to stop reading this yesterday last time i left you i was sobbing over the grandma passing away and it's still like this book i'm so soft right now they're like so mean to the main character molly calling her a freak and a weirdo and taking advantage of her and it is breaking my heart into a million pieces because she is so nice and has such a good heart and it's just like Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm on chapter 18, page 182. I am like over halfway through this book. I'm really enjoying it, even though it is making me cry. But I do think this was a really awesome book to start this video off with because I, I mean, I have been reading this book, The Seven Year Slip, for like two weeks now. And this book is really good but I just could not get myself to read it. <laughs> I don't know. So maybe after this one, I can hop back into this one and finally finish it out. But I really want to finish this one today and I know that there is a sequel coming out. So now I'm really excited. I'm going to hop back into it and I'll keep you guys updated. fucking book why did they make it so sad also i did not realize how short this book was so i'm on page 256 right now i'm almost done everything's like wrapping up right now this chapter was really sad but it is 285 pages and i definitely think like if you're in a reading slump it's so much easier to just grab a shorter quicker read something like less intimidating to tackle and this one has a really nice pacing to it it's not necessarily fast paced but it never felt slow to me and i do find that thrillers are an easier way for me especially to get out of book slumps because it leaves you wanting more you want to get to the end of the book you want to know what's going on i guess let me wrap this up and then i'll share my final thoughts okay hi i changed really fast i'm about to go walk the dogs really quick while it's Hugo's lunch break. We're gonna go for a little hot girl walk. But I just finished the book. It, like I said, it was really easy, quick to get through. It, I love the main character. I love Molly. 
there are a ton of characters in here i love the gran storyline was just that absolutely broke my heart the main character was just so close basically her grandma is all she had and oh my god i'm gonna cry <laughs> i i can't handle i can't handle that um the doorman love him love his daughter good story good characters <sighs> lots of emotions but this is one of those books that you've started and you kind of know where it's going and you also know that it's going to be a happy ending which isn't always the case with thrillers so i appreciated that this was honestly a really good pick good job hugo i feel like this was kind of what i needed and then also forcing myself to read yesterday it turned out to be really really good so anyways i am gonna go on my little walk and then we'll figure out what to read next Yesterday, I just did not feel like reading. So I guess I, I guess we're still kind of in a book slump. I don't know. But after I finished The Maid, I was like, I'm, I'm good on reading today. So it's actually the next day. I got a little London fog this morning and it is giving me life. Actually kind of a giant London fog. Anyways, I think that I am going to try to read this one today. So I actually just got this one in the mail. This is by Beth O'Leary, who I absolutely adore. This is The Wake Up Call. Two sworn enemies, one failing hotel. Love is the last thing they need. This is like an enemies to lovers sort of trope. But you also have a little bit of like forced proximity because they are co-workers and i just feel like this is going to be very very cute on the back it says that the two arch rivals both hotel receptionists find a collection of old wedding rings and compete to return them to their owners discovering their own love along the way there's actually a quote from emily henry on the back and she says beth o'leary is that rare one in a million talent who can make you laugh swoon cry and ache all in the same book which is absolutely so true you guys are on my my you guys are on like this stack of books these two are the only books i've read by beth o'leary but they made me fall in love with her this one is an absolute must read another like kind of it's not really a forced proximity romance because these two are roommates but they don't really see each other because of their conflicting schedules they only really get to know each other by like leaving little notes and i don't know these two are just very 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 cute and then this one is so adorable as well the granddaughter and grandmother switch lives but not in like a freaky friday sort of sense the grandma moves into the city to kind of like take over her apartment she moves into her grandma's small town it is absolutely adorable very very cute i actually need to send this to my grandma because i know she would love it that being said i have high hopes Okay, my attention span is non-existent today but i am 48 pages into this book so that is something i actually just got to the part where they find the missing wedding rings so now the book is starting to pick up but so far it is very very cute i really like the main character izzy she's very like high energy has like pink highlights and then her co-worker this is like this really buff brazilian man doesn't really like to have a lot of fun he's very serious it's already hitting some of my favorite tropes like this one line is 99 percent of the time i think izzy is the most annoying woman i have ever met but very occasionally i can't help noticing how beautiful she is i don't know why but that just really does it for me so anyways i am stopping here for now it is dual point of views which i think is really fun so you have izzy's point of view lucas's point of view and i love how they talk about each other so i will continue reading this one a little bit later but i am going to take a break also i feel like this would be a good christmas book because it's kind of set in winter it seems like it's christmas time right now just throwing it out there because i have been buying christmas books like crazy these are all new christmas books and i have one more in the mailbox right now actually about to sort some of these because i ended up getting some new books from the target circle week as well finally pick this one up this is before the coffee gets cold I think there's three or four books in this series and they're all like very relatively short no, it sounds cute and cozy some rom-coms i am not traveling until thanksgiving 
but I thought that this would be a good plane ride read. This is Just Haven't Met You Yet by Sophie. I think it's Cousins. I hate these stickers. I also got The Long Game by Alina Armas, and I just now realized, I just saw it at the bottom here, that she is the same author that wrote The Spanish Love Deception, which I really did not like. So hopefully this one's a little bit better. <laughs> I don't know, the cover is really cute. And I also got Happiness Falls. The cover is really cool too, and I've heard a million amazing things about this book. When a father goes missing, his family's desperate search leads them to question everything they know about him and one another, a riveting page turner, and a deeply moving portrait of a family in crisis. So this is kind of why I need to get out of my reading slump because I have so many books to catch up on right now. It's ridiculous i ended up finishing this book last night and it is the biggest slow burn like it took forever for things to finally happen and i think that's part of the reason that it kept me going this one turned out to be really really cute so if you're looking for a little rom-com maybe a little seasonal one because this is totally Christmas coded. I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed it. And these characters are kind of reminiscent of the two main characters in the flat share. The girl main character is like kind of loud and quirky and like loves colorful things. Like definitely a big presence, very happy, outgoing. Whereas the man is a little bit more like closed off in the flat share. He was just like shy mostly this one he has some problems expressing himself oh i enjoyed this one i really liked how things wrapped up i thought it was pretty cute but now i'm feeling like i'm on a roll here i need to finish one more for this vlog actually maybe two <laughs> That sounds a little crazy. I do need to read this today. This is what we're reading in my book club. This is The Horoscope Writer by Ash Bishop. It's honestly, it's completely bizarre. I have no idea where this is going. So I will be reading my designated chapters today. And then I was undecided on which one I wanted to finish this week because I have started both of these. We have a romance. We have a thriller. I've read both of those genres this week. In The Final Girls, I'm 86 pages in. In Seven Year Slip, I'm 72 pages in. I think I am gonna go with Final Girls though because this was on my fall TBR, my October TBR. This is something that I wanted to read this month. This one, I just kind of picked up on a whim. We'll see how it goes. You know what happens when the world ends. At least this is an okay bar for running into you. It's an awful house. No one is I'm on chapter 22 right now, page 185. There is only 339 pages, so getting close to the end. I feel like I know where this is going, but with Riley Sager books, there's always like crazy twists at the end, and I'm never right. So I am really enjoying this one. It's definitely, okay, so the whole premise is it's about three final girls, AKA they went through like basically a slasher movie IRL and they're the sole survivors of these attacks. The main character is about Quincy who went through her own thing but she has a connection to two other final girls Samantha Boyd and Lisa I don't remember her last name doesn't matter Lisa was like involved in something years and years ago and then Samantha Boyd's attack and then finally Quincy's so they're not really friends they just kind of have this kinship because they are the only ones that really know what it's like to go through that. But Lisa ends up dead and it starts this whole domino effect and Quincy is now wondering like, is this like a weird one-off? Is someone out to get the final girls? Like there's suspicious things going on. So it's a really interesting read. It's definitely thrilling, more, th more of a thriller than The Maid was. That was like a cute mystery. The main character was too wholesome for me to really consider that as a thriller. This one, this one is good for spooky season for sure and today's actually friday the 13th i'm definitely going to finish this one today i feel like i'm breezing through this one i'm so 
proud of myself. I guessed the killer correctly. Ooh. Did I miss the other 47 twists in the story? Absolutely, but I got the killer right. This was a really good one. This was a fun October read. It's not too scary. I, I think I might give this one four stars as well. Maybe three, maybe three. But it was a really good story. I like where it left us at the end. Like I said, with all Riley Sager books, there's always like the twist that you don't see coming, but he lets you think <laughs> that you know what is going on. It was really entertaining. Very, very, very good for October. Also, I'm feeling great right now. I've <laughs> officially read three books this week. Does that sound like a girl in a reading slump to you? No. I'm actually going to wrap up today's video here, but I will see you guys again next week. Finally feeling out of this slump. As for all the books that I mentioned in today's video, I would recommend all of them. They turned out to be really, really good. This one was like a good true thriller. Honestly, just a really good seasonal read. It's a little bit different this time of year and the characters, they kept me invested. Same with The Maid, but that one was a little bit more wholesome. Oh my god, that one tugged at my heartstrings. I'm so excited for the second one. Still a thriller, but not not so spooky. And then the rom-com was the ideal. Slow burn, enemies to lovers. That was so, so freaking cute. Overall, a success. And I thank you guys for sticking with me and trying to get myself back together, back to reading. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.